Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be looking at a part of the Bounty Hunter Hack the Box box and in specific the XXE or XML external entity attack part of this box. So let's jump straight into it. And on this box we have this uh, Bounty Hunters website and this Bounty Hunters website is just a basic website. Uh, I read a couple of scans on this, uh, like uh, an FF scan and that came up with a db.php file which is um, just empty so obviously there is some PHP code running here in the back end um, that we cannot access or it doesn't print out anything. However, it's good to know that that file's there. Uh, so we really only have this main page to work with. And we see that there is a contact page and a portal. And upon going to that portal, we see that the portal is still in development, but we can go to this link to test the bounty tracker. And now this is interesting, this bounty tracker, we can uh, add something here. So I'll make a random post here. I want 10,000 or 100,000 for that. And it says, if the database were ready, you would have added uh, what I just entered. So, okay, that is interesting. However, what's going on in the backend here? How is this working? And for that, I'm going to look at the request in burp. So I'm going to get my burp listener or proxy on, and then I'm going to submit this. Burp has just caught this, and we can see that the data here is being transmitted in a base64 value seemingly. So let's just send this to the repeater and take a look at it. And in the repeater we have this inspector menu here which is really cool because we can go into the body parameters and it's already going to say here, okay, there is a parameter named data. Let's make this way bigger. There's a parameter named data and this is the value. I can go into here, into the arrow and I can look at the value here and then I can decode it from URL to this value and then decode it from base64 to this value. And now we can see that this is what we entered, but in an XML format. That is very interesting because XML formats that have user input, they can be susceptible to XXE or uh, XML external entity attacks. So let's try that out. And a simple attack here uh, looks like this. We're going to add a, um, a doc type to this. And this doc type is going to replace something. What, what are we going to replace? Well, we're going to replace an entity. So I'm going to type entity. Uh, and this entity is going to have a name. I'm going to name this integrity. And then we are going to do something. Um, and for example, in this case, I'm just going to replace a string and this string is going to be pink draconian. Okay, now how do we use this entity that we just created? Well, we're, we're just going to go into one of these fields that we know shows up on the screen, screen so we can see what happens there and we're going to type uh, this ampersand sig uh, symbol and then integrity and then a uh, semicolon. We're going to apply these changes and the data here is going to change and we can send this over and now we see that ping draconian ends up in this title field here. So that's how you know okay an XXE is actually working here. This The server interpreted this and replaced this value with ping draconian. And that makes it very interesting because now we can try to do some cool stuff such as read files from the file system. And for that I'm not going to replace the integrity entity with a string, I'm going to replace it with the content of a file. Uh, and that's actually not done with file, that's done with system. So from the system we are going to do something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the file URL wrapper and now I can say okay I want slash etsy pass wd. We are going to apply changes and send the request and now we see, boom, we can read Etsy uh, past WD. So we can see all the users here. We have the root user, we have the, um, the development user here with ID 1000. Uh, not really any other users there, users there, but that's very interesting to know. But all right, that uh, really shows that we have an XXE, but can we get a, a, a remote code execution rather, can we get that? On this system and this is where for example our um, database.php file could come interest could come in handy because we could potentially be able to read this file however a PHP file contains some very strange characters uh, such as the opening brackets for PHP so if we were to use this system that we currently have it probably wouldn't work 
Um, however, we, we can change this around by using the PHP wrapper here. And in this PHP wrapper, I'm going to say, okay, don't get Etsy, uh, or yeah, get Etsy the past WD, uh, but not like that. What I want is I want to apply a filter to this. And this filter is going to do a base64, a, a sorry, a convert dot base64, and then, and then do an encoding. Okay, the encoding is then going to uh, take a specific file, and that specific file here is then obviously going to be uh, or Etsy pass WD, and we're going to do that with resource, and our resource is then Etsy pass WD. We can apply those changes and send this re request, and now we see that we get a whole lot of base64 back here. I'm going to copy that, going to go to the decoder, and decode this as base64. And now we see that we get the same file back uh, just in this base64 way. And that's important to know when we are going to try to get our file that we want this this database.php file. Now, where could that file be? Let's just try to find, uh, look at the web route. So that's uh, going to be for www.htmldb.php. db.php. I'm going to send that request, and now we get some more base64. And I want to grab all of that and go into the decoder again. I'm going to paste that in again, decode as base64. And that shows us a PHP file here where we have a DB server, local host, a name, bounty, an admin, and a database password. Now the to-do says that we need to implement a login system with the database, so supposedly this database isn't working yet, but we have a password, and password reusage is still a very big thing. So could we use this password to, for example, log in with SSH or something like that? Let's try that out. So first, let's try to log in as root at our IP address here, which we're going to copy from there. And we're going to try to log in as root. Uh, this is HTTP in here, which obviously doesn't need to be there. All right. Now we need to supply the password that I have to copy again from there. And now I can paste that in. Uh, and hope that that works. It seems to be taking it a long time and it says permission denied. So yeah, we're not allowed to do that. However, are we allowed to log in as developments? Because we saw earlier that that was another user here. And if I enter that password, it works. And now we are logged in as the development user. And that is how we got, uh, how we exploited the XXE in this case to get access to a file that we shouldn't have access to. We shouldn't have the source code of that file, but now we do, and that led us to get an RCE. And that is one of the powers of XXE. So if you find this vulnerability, try to escalate it by looking for files that you shouldn't have read access to, and that could contain sensitive data. But that was it for today's video. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like. Uh, if you have any recommendations of labs that we should cover, of things you want to learn about, let me know down below in the comments and then we will see if we can get you some cool videos out on that topic. Now, that's it for me this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back next week. Take care.